In this lesson, we're going to draw our design, go over two different ways of cutting. We're gonna practice chain piecing. We're gonna start with drawing a two scale sketch. And I like to draw a sketch to scale because these mini quilts are smaller than you realize. These strips are narrower than you think. Working really large as a quilter, you're probably gonna start off cutting your strips too big. So if you draw a two scale sketch, this is gonna help you out realizing how thick these strips are gonna be. I have a simple tabloid piece of paper, but I want my mini to be 11 by 14. So I'm just gonna eyeball about three inches off of this. I'm gonna fold it and I'm going to rip it just so it's a two scale piece of paper. Perfect. Okay. Now I have a Sharpie, just so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm gonna draw my main seam. And here I'm just going to go wide to narrow, thin to thick, maybe I'll do a little bit of a curve. And this is not gonna be a sketch that I, it's gonna be my like die hard, I have to sew this exactly the same, this is my pattern. This is just to give me a rough estimate of how large these strips are going to be, how wide, okay. I know that there are a few different kinds of people out there. Some of you love improv, just naturally. Some of you get a little bit nervous, but want to try it out. Others of you, now this is how I started quilting, love your ruler and your rotary cutter. You love patterns, you like to follow the math. I'm with you, I totally get that. You can use this sketch a couple different ways. You can just look at it, guesstimate and then go straight into cutting. So you're my loosey goosey group three. My more, you know, like on the fence about this improv thing group two, you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure. I'm gonna see, okay, the bottom of this strip is about an inch and the top is about an inch, but it's kind of wonky in the middle. So I'll just remember to do that when I'm cutting. Okay, that's about an inch. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, this guy, whew, he got kind of wide in the middle. That's about two inches right there. So I'm just writing, you know, roughly estimates of what these measurements are. And you know, they're not the same. So up here we have a whole inch. So that's gonna be pretty narrow to wide to narrow again. Okay, so I'm gonna take this information, I'm gonna set my sketch aside, and then I would go to my fabric and I would start cutting based on these measurements. But my group one, if you love your pattern, there is a really special trick here for you. You can take your paper scissors, not your fabric scissors, and you can actually slice up this two scale sketch, make a template. You can trace it directly on your fabric. But here's the trick. Always add that quarter inch to each side because we're gonna be sewing with that basic quilt quarter inch. So if you're using this as a template, be sure to add your quarter inch to both sides. That would be a two and a quarter inch cut. And then up here, we have a one and a half inch cut. So keep that in mind. You can't just cut straight from the template. You have to cut a quarter inch wide on both sides. So now I'm gonna show you how to cut a couple different ways. We've drawn our sketch. And so now I know roughly what each strip size is supposed to be. So now the first way is with my ruler and my rotary cutter. Are you feeling safe, my traditionalist? <laughs> All right, I took off the safety. I'm gonna add my quarter inch to both sides and I'm gonna cut this first strip um, about a quarter inch and a, an inch and a quarter to about an inch and a half. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna cut away from myself just like that. So here's my first strip, voila. I'm gonna cut a few of these because I want this taupey color in a couple different places. So now I'm gonna eyeball it and some of those strips look a little bit narrower so I'm gonna cut this about an inch maybe to about an inch and a half. Okay, maybe I'll just cut one more for safety just so I have it. I'm not even gonna look at my sketch at this point. And we did it. So we got three, three nice little cuts. Oh, I forgot to show you the second way. The second way is with scissors. So if you're a beginner quilter and you don't even have a cutting mat or a rotary or a ruler or a rotary cutter, it's totally fine. Take your little scissors, and this is actually really nice because you can get some really cool curves. So I'm just gonna slightly bend that strip in the middle. I'm gonna get narrow again on the edge. Oh, look at that, perfect. 
All right, moving on. So now I'm going to cut one more piece just so I can have something to sew in a minute. Okay, uh, eyeball it. We're going to make this kind of fat because I really like this magenta color. So I'm just going to, you know what? Let's just do that because <laughs> fabric rips on the grain so I can do that. Okay, now I have some strips. Now let's chain piece. So all of our strips are cut and I've laid them all out. Now I know this is gonna be review for some of you, but I'm gonna talk about chain piecing. So I'm gonna pick up my first strip, I'm gonna place right sides together, and you'll notice that these are solids. So there is no wrong side, there is no right side, but just pretend. So we're gonna line up that edge, I take it to the machine, and I'm gonna sew roughly a quarter inch. Because, you know, most quilts, yes, quarter inch, but we're kind of breaking those rules. So you can get a little bit curvy. You could, you know, take it to a half an inch if you want to get crazy. Or you could even, you know, make it an eighth of an inch. So anywhere around a quarter of an inch. I'm going to keep flipping these right sides together. And then once I have them all flipped, I'm going to take them to my machine. Flip, flip, flip. I have my first strip. And you can even see these edges don't even really match up that well, but that's okay. This is just play, this is fun. I'm gonna line it up, and I'm just gonna start sewing. Don't go too quickly, because I'm not pinning, so you don't want it to get like majorly warped. But you can see that I'm kind of, some of it's an eighth of an inch, I'm kind of going a half an inch. I'm getting a little bit curvy. I'm sewing that entire strip. Okay, I'm not gonna cut my threads. This is where the chain piecing thing comes in. I'm just gonna grab my next little buddy, I'm going to slide him under, and we're just going to keep sewing. And this is called chain piecing because I'm chaining my pieces together. Kind of self-explanatory. Keep your hands on the machine. I, I have a tendency to wave my hands around, but keep them on the machine. I'm just going to keep sewing that quarter inch-ish, quarter inch-ish. It's kind of a tongue twister. Um, making sure I get both strips. Yep. And you can see I'm not being that precise. All right, last strip here. Last strip and then I'm ready to iron. Now ironing is a ton of fun, let me tell you. <laughs> chain pieced our strips, we've snipped each little thread, and now it's time to press. So we're literally just going to take our iron and press it on top of those seams. I'm not going to move it around too much because I don't want to warp these pieces of fabric. I mean, my sewing job pretty much warped them well enough. So here I'm really just getting that seam woven in, pressed into the fibers of the fabric. This is going to get you a really nice flat ironed seam. Okay, now I'm gonna iron to the dark side. I have my light fabric on the bottom, my dark fabric on the top, and what I like to do is gently open this up, finger press it open. So I finger press it first so there's not a ton of pressure on that seam, and then I just gently go over it, pressing, moving slightly, finger pressing first, and then ironing after it's open. And that gives you a really nice flat seam. Okay, we're going to open up this orange one right here. I'm going to do the same thing, just finger press it open, kind of nuzzle that open with the tip of my iron, and then just follow it through. And I'm going to keep doing that, ironing to the dark side with all of my other strips. Okay, the next one is going to be an example of why I want you to iron to the dark side. So I'm going to flip this over. Oh, look at that. Look at that wacky sewing right here you see some of that dark fabric. So once you open this up and really press it down, you can see that dark fabric underneath the white fabric. And that's gonna really frustrate you once you have it all quilted. It's gonna be like a stain you can't remove. So that's why I always recommend ironing to the dark side because you can't see that white fabric from underneath the dark fabric. So I'm just gonna keep opening and keep ironing. And you can kind of hum to yourself or, you know what, maybe let's get some music pumping. All right, DJ, drop a beat.
right, people, we're back at the sewing machine. I'm going to flip my strips. I'm going to flip them right sides together. And this time it does matter because I've sewn some seams. And I'm going to take them over to my sewing machine and chain piece, just like we did last time. So here we go. I'm keeping my hands on the sewing machine. And we're sewing. Sewing that quarter inch seam, roughly. We're not being too careful, just careful enough to be safe. Oh, did you see that? All in one motion. Didn't even stop. I'm a speed sewer, but don't go too fast. Just fast enough to be safe. All right, quarter inch seaming it up. Just a little bit. Okay, so now I am gonna cut my threads right here because I have a lone wolf just chilling over there. I need to sew him to something. So really quick, I'm just gonna press these seams to the dark side. And then I'm gonna sew my last strip and my last final seams together. All right, at this point, I could probably pretty easily get these out of order, so let me refocus. Okay, I have my magenta, I have my peach, I have my lone wolf. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly sew you together. Here we go, right sides together. Back at the machine. Let's do this. Quarter inch seam. Yum, yum. I love that sound, that hummy hum sound. Okay, cutting the thread. I have my final seam with this group of fabric now. Pressing that seam to the dark side. It's open. Okay. Okay, final iron with this little bunch of fabric. We're getting so close, guys. So now I have my first side finished. Now I've shown you all of the steps you need to make the next half of the mini quilt. These are the squatty short ends, so get chain piecing. So we've sewn our long strips and we've sewn our little squatty strips. And you can see that I did the exact same thing as we did before. Flipped it around, I ironed to the dark side. Now this is what the, the back of your little squatty strip set should look like. Something like this, roughly like this. I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, now it's time to trim and then sew these two babies together. If you don't have a mat and rotary cutter, no worries. I'm going to kind of overlap the two pieces together so I have a guideline. And then I would take scissors and I would cut this squatty side so that you have a nice clean line so you can flip it and sew that seam. I'm going to use a ruler and rotary cutter just to show my other peeps how it's done that way. Oh, one more thing I want to point out. These obviously are like very different sizes. That's because I was just willy-nilly sewing strips. Eventually, after I sew these two pieces together, I'm going to trim them down so they're just a little bit more square. Okay, safety off. I'm going to line this up. And this is where you can really rotate. If I want more of an angle, I can kind of rotate it this way. And it's nice that I gave myself this extra wiggle room. I'm gonna put down my ruler on top of that strip, this long strip, use it as a guideline. And now I'm just gonna cut over it. And you can see, I'll pull this apart. And I have a nice, oh, look at that. And then this is kind of fun. Okay, now I'm gonna flip these over. And if you want to, you can use pins and you can pin the sides together. Again, you don't have to. And I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam. We've pinned both of our sides together. And I just wanna point out before we hop on the machine that you have a lot of seams to navigate. So you're gonna wanna sew a bit slower. Try not to bend these seams when you're sewing. Again, it doesn't matter a ton if you do, but you'll have a much flatter end seam if you don't. So just keep that in mind, try your best, and that's good enough. 
And I'm gonna sew just a bit slower. I'm gonna sew that quarter inch seam. It's going very slowly. Cause I'm not pressing with my whole foot apparently. There we go. Okay, cutting that. Now it's time for the big reveal. So now we've sewn our seam and you can see there's quite a bit of bulk. Okay, we have a lot of seams going on. So I'm actually going to flip it. I'm gonna flip it to this side. I'm gonna iron this side open so that I'm not ironing over all of that bulk. So what do I do first? Press the seam, just by simply pressing it down. Oh, I accidentally kind of pressed that one open, so I'm gonna press it closed again. And now, voila! Here we go. The big reveal, pressing it open. How does it look? So good. Yes, now it is time to trim. Trim this peppy. So we've finished sewing, and now it's time to just step back. Think about how do you want this to look when it's finished? Are you gonna frame it? What are you gonna do with this little mini? You can square it up pretty nice and square like I did with this sample. Or, come with me, over here I used my scissors and I just kind of bowed it this way, I curved it this way. I wanted it to look wonky because I knew it was going to go in a squared frame and I wanted to play up that handmade look. So now let's come back over here and I'll show you how you can trim this with either scissors or a ruler and rotary cutter. So I have my ruler and rotary cutter and I'm going to use the grid on my ruler to to find out what is my right angle gonna be. Because in my head I'm thinking, okay, I want, I want this corner to be kind of squared. So, I'm looking at this line, I'm looking at this line, and now I'm gonna make my cut. I just love these little strips. They're so cute. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate my mini, and I'm gonna just swap, swap out my rotary cutter for my scissors. Uh, I'm gonna line this up with a line on my grid, but you know, I want the top to be kind of rounded. So I'm gonna just vaguely use the grid as a guide. And I'm gonna kind of bow it a little bit. Just kind of give it a nice organic, just sloping curve, nothing too crazy. That side, you know what, this side is already pretty good, so let's just focus on this bottom. We have one more raggedy edge to trim out. I'll get my ruler and rotary cutter back. And if I want this to be really square, I can use that grid on my ruler and I can make that cut. So here we go. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. And that is unconventional lines. <laughs>